Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Impact Photo. My name is Dustin Meyer and today we're going to do another tutorial on Portrait Pro Studio Max. We're working on version 15, so make sure you guys have up-to-date software in order to follow along. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. I've already imported whoops wrong one <laughs> I've already imported a image from Lightroom this was from a uh, marketing campaign last winter with uh, Goodwill for their uh, new uh, fashion line so um, we're gonna just dive right into it so when you first import make sure that you have your sharpening increased because otherwise it makes it a little tricky for the software to find the edges of the face and all that good stuff so we're gonna click on new face now keep in mind that when you first import into Portrait Pro Studio Max, it's gonna try and automatically find the face and also automatically try to adjust any enhancements to the picture. Uh, but what I like to do is do all of that manually. And the reason why is because it kind of helps speed up the adjustment of the outlines process. And that way you don't have to wait for the software to try and render any uh, effects or changes to the face while you're still trying to adjust the outlines. So as you can see, we have a female here. We're gonna click on that. And we're going to use the space bar. Sorry, we're going to use the uh, control button. And we're going to click on the outside of the eyes. And now we're going to zoom out and then we're going to do the nose, corners of the mouth. And we're going to do uh, the eyebrows. And the whole point of this is to try and do this as quickly as possible to save you time and you can get as specific as you want. I know in some of my other videos, I get a little specific with it, but today we're gonna just try and go over some of this without spending too much time. And let's see here. Alrighty, and just always make sure that the inside of the eyes are all the way to the white of the eyes, not all the way to the corner of the eyes. And the reason for that is the adjustments to the eyes are always gonna be um, just the color and the white and the brightness of the eyes. We really don't want that to affect the outside. So now, now you'll get to choose uh, whether it's mouth opened or closed. And since we're in here, we're going to do mouth open. And the outside of the lips always needs to be right on the edge. And that way it can also help clean up the teeth and enhance the smile. And depending on what color uh, lips your model is using for their uh, makeup, sometimes the color might be a little too close to their natural skin tone. So you just want to make sure that you do a little bit more accurate adjustment. And that way, if you need to do any teeth whitening or whatnot, then that's accurate as well without losing the lip color. Okay, so we're going to go next. Now, if you happen to have somebody who needs a little bit adjustment of the face, whether you need to slim it down or make it more round, just go around the jawline. This is really important for people that need a little bit of face contouring. But again, we're just being a little bit careful here. And also one more because you can actually slim the face or change the face altogether. Okay, so you can click over here or just mouse over and it'll remove. There we go. And we're gonna do uh, just to zoom out a little bit here. All right, and as you can see already, it's done a really good job. It's enhanced some of the skin tones. It's already uh, taken away some of the facial shine. And we're gonna go into the face here and just do a comparison. The teeth have been cleaned up already. It's added a little bit of lip color so that it doesn't look as washed out, especially if you're using flash. And then of course, if you need to widen the eyes a little bit, if a lot of us, when we smile too much, our eyes get a little squinty. So we're going to go down to, let's see, eye controls. We're going to go to, and we're going to do eye widening just a little bit. Because one of the things about pictures is you always want to have a little bit more eyes open to help make a connection with the person that's viewing the picture. So let's see. And then you can also change the shape of the nose. If you want to make it smaller or longer, uh, you can also do head forward if you need to. So sometimes people get a little bit of double chin, and then we're going to do just a little bit of face shape, just kind of tuck her chin in a little bit. Skin smoothing, everything looks pretty good here, but you can always use the master fade if you need to. Let's see, you can also change the texture. There we 
go. Remove shine, find shadows around the eyes just a little bit to get rid of some of those eye lines. There we go. Now, skin lighting is always a good one. Sometimes what I like to do is zoom out just a little. And that way I can just double check overall what it looks like. If you want, you can fill in some shadows a little bit on the left side. You can add a little bit more modeling light if you need to bring it up a little bit. Sometimes you can do fixed lighting if you need to. There we go. That looks good. And let's see, we'll add just a touch of contrast there. Perfect. Okay, so let's go back. Now we're going to do eye controls. I'm going to bring it out just a little bit. There we go. Let's zoom in real quick and see how that looks. This way you can add a little bit of color and whitening the eyes. Now, as you can see, you guys, I'm really trying to go for a very natural look. If you need to whiten the teeth, you can. And usually, generally, I like to just use the master fade. Now, this one's going to take a little bit more time here. What I'm going to do is do hair. And the reason why is sometimes I just want to make sure that the hair coloring matches. Now, what I love to do is go into the view edit hair area and you can use the brackets to enlarge your brush size. It'll automatically select the same color of the hair. Sometimes you may need to go over it just to make sure that it's not, that it's at 100% opacity. All right, so now what we're going to do is cut back just a little bit over the skin here so we don't accidentally do anything to her face. We're going to click OK. And now we're going to go into hair tidying mode. This is something I really love because it helps kind of get rid of some of that sort of coarse look to hair, especially if it hasn't been brushed or if it just needs a little bit more smoothness to it. Now what we'll do is just kind of go up to smooth hair. And now I know it's really subtle. So we're going to zoom in a little bit more. Now look, I'm going to pull it down all the way. Okay, so right now the hair seems a little coarse. But we're going to bring it up a little bit. And I'm still trying to make it look realistic. There we go. Click OK. And one of the things I just really like about this is it really kind of helps you know, smooth out the hair and the texture and everything else. So let's go back to fit and just kind of see how everything looks overall. That looks really good. What I might do is just kind of sculpt the face a little bit more. Good. All right. You can also change the shape of the neck if you want to make it a little bit longer. And let's see, picture controls, this is totally up to you. Uh, you can change anything in here if you want to make it a little bit more brighter or contrasty. It also helps enhance the color if you didn't quite get it. And in fact, sometimes what I want to do is make it just a little bit, whoa, never mind, wrong slider. We're going to go up a little bit in brightness. There we go. Okay, so let's just zoom in real quick and take another peek at the face. We still have good texture on the face, which is always really important to help sort of avoid that kind of soft plasticky look. Uh, we've got nice white teeth. Again, it also has an automatic spot removal, so that kind of helps get rid of some of these extra bumps and textures, sometimes freckles too. If you want to keep those, you can always lower the sensitivity on that. But I really like how this is looking. The skin tone on the face is a lot more even and... Other than that, I think it looks great. So we're going to go ahead and save. Now, if you have the current version of Portrait Pro Studio Max, you can have the plugin installed in Lightroom. And what that'll do is it'll automatically import the picture back into Lightroom so you can keep it inside your catalog and just keeps everything nice and seamless. That's another episode of Portrait Pro Studio Max. Thank you so much for watching. Always keep an eye out for new episodes by subscribing. If you like what you saw today and you find it really helpful, you can always give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'm going to post a link to the trial version for the software so you can check it out for yourself. And today's episode was sponsored by Nikon. So thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, this is Dustin Meyer, and today we are going to do a Lightroom tutorial on color correcting an image. Um, we're not going to really go into retouching, we're going to go into a different video for that. Today is also going to be kind of going for the film look. So, I'm a big fan of Jose Villa. Um, Anyways, uh, Jose